the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, was compelled to issue a statement clarifying the confusion surrounding a multitude of matters for the public. Foremost among them is the temporary seizure of Nikola Tesla's documents by the Department of Justice when he passed away in 1943 at a hotel in New York. It was believed that these papers contained plans for a weapon named the Death Ray, confiscated by the Office of Alien Property Custodian within the department. In their statement, the Bureau elucidated that they never possessed Tesla's papers or any microfilm purportedly derived from them. Moreover, the matter was not under investigation concerning their personnel, emphasizing that these circulating rumors in biographies and articles about Tesla were disseminated without verifying the sources of information. Indeed, the tale following Tesla's demise alone has spawned a number of conspiracy theories. During that period, the Yugoslavian ambassador to the United States, Sava Kasanovic, was Tesla's nephew. Upon learning of his uncle's death, he hastened to the hotel, armed with knowledge of the secret codes to his uncle's safe. He unlocked it and took a few items before departing. Perhaps this might appear ordinary to most people, but nothing regarding Tesla can be deemed ordinary in the slightest. We are discussing one of the most significant inventors in history, a founder of the electrical age, with around 300 patents in over 25 countries, including 111 patents in the United States alone. Additionally, he made numerous contributions and groundbreaking advancements in the field of electricity. Moreover, he was the very man who had been making lofty proclamations since his arrival in the United States in 1884, not only about the death ray, but also about energy everywhere and wireless transmission of signals through the earth. Furthermore, he delved even further, speaking of his obsession with the three pyramids of Egypt, which he claimed resembled colossal batteries, with the numbers 3, 6, and 1, and communicating with the center of the universe and extraterrestrial beings, among other things. The United States government had a compelling reason to investigate the possibility of the death ray being real, especially since Tesla had declared on multiple occasions that his new weapon, primarily defensive in nature, would employ a beam of ions traveling at a velocity of 400,000 km per hour, utilizing hitherto unimagined laws of physics. It would enable him to amass 100 billion watts in a single square centimeter out of 100 million parts. However, the problem lay in the fact that Tesla was secretive and provided no practical evidence of the existence or feasibility of this weapon. After Tesla's death, the U.S. government summoned a high-voltage physics expert from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to peruse the remaining papers of Tesla. The results concluded that Tesla's ray was speculative, philosophical marketing in nature and did not involve sound and applicable principles and methods. Indeed, most scholars now agree that the Tesla ray was merely an attempt at marketing, especially considering that we know Tesla lived in a time when it was not easy to accomplish an innovation without funding from a businessman. He indeed relied on funding from major investors during that period, and it was necessary for him to present expectations that would capture their attention in order to receive the funding. After years following Tesla's death, many of his works were released, which can be seen at the Nikola Tesla Museum in Belgrade, housing over 160,000 original documents and more than 1,000 blueprints and drawings of his work. However, at that specific point, doubt arises, as some may believe that the United States concealed their findings. But consider the historical context in which all of this occurred. We are talking about the end of the 1930s and the early 1940s, the peak of World War II. Consequently, there were fears, and hopes, on the other hand, that this weapon could be real. In fact, the Soviet Union at the time had dedicated over $25,000 to investigate Tesla's claims in 1939. Tesla and alternating current the myths and rumors surrounding Tesla's inventions did not stop at the alleged death ray. In fact, it seems that the main problem faced by many members of the Nikola Tesla fan club, a massive club currently present on social media, is that they only perceive Tesla as the exceptional genius and the most important and greatest inventor in history. However, like any innovator, he is capable of making statements that may be misleading or promotional, or have a philosophical nature without a true scientific basis. Well, did you know that Tesla was not the original inventor of alternating current? Perhaps you have heard or read about it in a book or seen it in a YouTube video or documentary. But in reality, 
the fundamental ideas behind alternating current were established before Tesla's birth. In 1832, Michael Faraday explained that there are three types of electricity, including electricity induced by magnetism in a coil, which produces alternating current. The first alternating current generator was already produced by the French machine manufacturer Hippolyte Pixii in the same year. What Tesla accomplished was not specifically alternating current, but rather improvements related to his work, especially in the form of motors. His engineering achievements were excellent, which led George Westinghouse, an American contractor and engineer, to join forces with Tesla in an attempt to promote alternating current as a replacement for direct current. The main difference between alternating current and direct current lies in the direction in which the electrons flow. In direct current, electrons flow steadily in one direction, while in alternating current, electrons continue to change their direction. Together, Westinghouse and Tesla built the first hydroelectric power station at Niagara Falls in 1895, and out of the 13 patents in this achievement, nine were attributed to Tesla. Prior to this date, in July 1888, a licensing deal was made for Tesla's polyphase induction motor and transformer with Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company. Tesla received $60,000 in addition to a royalty of $2.50 for every horsepower produced by each alternating current motor, and furthermore, Tesla worked as a consultant for the company for a monthly fee of $2,000. Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla are two prominent figures in the field of electricity. However, it is important to note that the so-called war of currents is not directly associated with Nikola Tesla. You may have read online that Edison intentionally sabotaged Tesla's work because Tesla championed alternating current, while Edison insisted on using direct current to illuminate cities. Let me clarify that alternating current had a significant advantage as it could be transmitted over long distances through wires, whereas direct current had limitations, requiring the construction of numerous power stations. However, even this widely known information is not entirely accurate. Edison's battle, which occurred during the late 1800s and early 1900s, was primarily with Westinghouse. When Edison resorted to underhanded tactics, such as publicly electrocuting animals with alternating current, he became greatly invested in executing the first electric chair using alternating current. He proposed naming this execution technique the Westinghouse Technique. Undoubtedly, Tesla suffered from this rivalry as he supported Westinghouse's alternating current, and his collaboration with the man ceased due to a wave of losses. However, in the end, Tesla described Edison as a person of great genius and enduring achievements, while Edison himself once referred to Tesla as one of the greatest electrical geniuses the world has ever known. There is another myth that Edison stole the idea of the electric light bulb from Tesla. However, Sir Humphrey Davy invented the first electric light in 1809, half a century before Tesla's birth. Then in 1840, Warren de la Rue placed a platinum filament inside a sealed, evacuated tube to create light, serving as the first experimental model of a light bulb. In 1875, Bernard Henry Woodward and Matthew Evans patented the electric light, which Edison later purchased and further developed to achieve a lifespan of up to 600 hours, making them commercially viable. Nevertheless, Tesla enthusiasts worldwide still harbor animosity towards Thomas Edison. In the end, alternating current emerged victorious and is currently utilized in household appliances, offices, buildings, and cities worldwide. Direct current is used in limited applications such as mobile phone batteries, flat-screen televisions, and electric cars.